The Dryland Pasture Legume Systems Project aims to encourage farmers in low to medium rainfall zones across southern Australia to increase their uptake of pasture legumes to benefit cropping and livestock production. The trigonella is coming along very well, isn't it? Beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. The project's demonstrating how new and improved legumes can boost profit and overcome barriers, including cost. The takeaway is going to be we are going to provide you with the data to make you confident to adopt these pasture legumes and with the knowledge they're going to benefit your farming system. They're going to lower the risk, they're going to increase your productivity, they're going to allow you to make decisions that you're going to be calmer about because it's all proven. Here in the Western region, there are nine field trials and five large-scale demonstrations. All are designed to help growers understand the benefits of pasture legumes in mixed systems and on different soil types, with new species removing old barriers to pasture legume uptake. Decreasing risk, increasing profit, increasing resilience and better tolerance of climate change and change rainfall patterns. The project, led by GIDC, is an $18 million cross-industry collaboration with Meat and Livestock Australia and Australian Wool Innovation, giving farmers renewed confidence in legumes on many levels. Professor Howison says that summer sowing gives hard seed time to break down slowly, with the deep-rooted and climate-adapted legumes ready to germinate on first rains. That's significant because these legumes, when they get up and going on the earliest rains, they produce more biomass, more animal feed, more nitrogen for your crops, more competition for your weeds, a greater overall outcome. And they've managed to do it at a time when they're not competing with their cropping program. The Northern Trial Site features some exciting new species that are showing good capacity for reducing root lesion nematodes and production of seed above ground, meaning growers can use a conventional header to harvest their own seed, reducing on-farm costs. Two genuses that we're sort of honing in on at the moment, and that's Trigonella and Scorpiurus. These pasture legumes that we've been looking at are suited to soils that are of the alkaline um, and, and fine textured soils. Um, compared to the coarse acid soils where we've been sort of kicking some goals for a long time now with, with the Ceredellas and Bicerulas, so we're sort of moving away from that and then going on to sort of these new species um, on a different soil type to complement that medic background. Well look at that, we've got a great nitrogen fixation potential here. That's a lovely fan shaped nodule. So those nodules are expanding in response to the demand of the plant for more nitrogen, so they put on more mass and the nitrogen factory gets cranked up. Basically it comes down to your, your N inputs that you, you've created a nitrogen bank for those subsequent crops and then you can um, sort of make your decisions as the season unfolds and as you know no one can predict the weather so if you've got that fallback of nitrogen in the system that's a, that's a benefit to a lot of farmers in these dry areas. One of the critical aspects of the research is how animals perform on the new pasture species. These sheep are part of the project's animal science component, helping to determine pasture legume benefits to wool and meat, with the aim of optimising production and profitability for farmers. So pasture legumes tend to have a higher feeding value for sheep and cattle, which just means the animals can grow faster. They also have a higher crude protein content, particularly when they're drying off in summer. So much better for helping you finish those late lambs. Determining pasture legumes' nutritional value is a major focus here, with the prospect of extending the period of quality feed and reducing supplementary feeding. Haley says that's just one of the many advantages pasture legumes offer farmers. Well, the data from our experiments and the modelling is saying that farmers can earn $100 more per winter grazed hectare by adopting these species, but that will only happen if they are optimising their stocking rates. So we need to work on ways of helping farmers fill the feed gaps and get their stocking rates up to take advantage of these species. The team encourages growers to attend field days and access online information for the latest details on the research, which is now in its third year in the Western region. Professor Howison says growers can already be confident that pasture legumes can boost profit and reduce risks, especially with increasing climate challenges. It's incredibly exciting and the farmers we speak to are excited. It's a huge innovation in 
farming systems for Southern Australia, it's a, it's a one in a hundred year innovation. It's a new ideology and it's a new opportunity and it comes when we need it with a changing climate and variable rainfall patterns. This makes us resilient in the face of those challenges. This project is supported by funding from the Australian Government Department of Agriculture, Water and Environment as part of its Rural R&D for Profit program. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.